people. This is our geometry chapter, very first lesson. So remember, we're doing geometry in two different phases. This phase is all about two-dimensional things. Our first two-dimensional shape that we'll be talking about is parallelograms. So uh, as we go through these quick notes and this quick lesson, I'm going to give you the uh, quick area of a parallelogram formula, talk a little bit about the shape, do a couple of examples with you, and we'll be on our merry way. Um, I would highly advise that during this chapter, as you are creating your notes, you just write down the shape, draw one out, write down the formula, and if I give you any important tips or information about it, jot that down in the area surrounding that shape. And by the end of this chapter, you should have maybe a page, if you want to put them all on the same page, of notes that have a variety of shapes, the way that you find the area of each shape, and um, a picture of it, and maybe an example or two to go along with it. Your notes are your notes though, so set them up how you'd like. But without further ado, the area of parallelograms. This is what a parallelogram looks like. Um, sometimes you might even see them turned on their side like this. Um, but no matter how it looks, um, a parallelogram has four sides, so it's a quadrilateral, quad means four, and it's got two pairs of sides that are parallel to one another. So this side and this side are parallel, and this side and this side are parallel. That's why it's called a parallelogram. So quadrilateral with two pairs of parallel sides. And we're talking about how do you find the area of a parallelogram, meaning how much space the shape takes up. So to do that, the formula that we use is the area of a parallelogram is equal to the base of the parallelogram multiplied by the height of the parallelogram. So I've written down A equals B times H. Maybe you want to write out the full words area equals base times height. So with that being said, we need to identify what is the base in a parallelogram and what is the height of a parallelogram. Let's start with the base. So in a parallelogram, the base, I'm going to say, can be any side. What you really need to get out of your, your thinking, you might potentially be thinking, oh, the base, that's the bottom. That is incorrect thinking. The base of any shape is not the side that it's laying on. It could be, this could be the base, but we might be viewing one of the other sides as the base. So the base of a shape, of a parallelogram, can be any of the four sides. So how do you know which side to call the base? How do I know if I should be looking at it like this side is the base? Or how do I know if this should be the base? I need to rotate it. The way that you can tell is by going to the next thing, which is h height. This is our determining factor of how to figure out what the base is. The height, I'm going to define the height of a parallelogram as the straight distance that runs between bases. So I'll explain what I mean by that. If this is the base, then the side across from it, which is the same exact side, would also be called the base. They're the same sides, they're parallel to one another, if I'm calling this the base, this could also be called the base. The height is a straight distance that connects the first base to the other side. So this would be the height. It will form a 90 degree angle showing that it's a straight distance from one side to the other. Now let's take the same parallelogram. I'm going to duplicate this shape so it's the exact same one. And let's turn it so it's sitting on the other side. So now it's standing straight up and down. If we were going to call this the base, which would also make this the base since it's the same side right across from one another, 
the height would have to be going from here straight down to the bottom. This would be the height. So depending on what the figure gives you in terms of the height will help you figure out which side the base is. If I had a parallelogram where all the sides were labeled and I had a height running top to bottom, that would mean that this is the base. If, on the other hand, I had a height running from here to here, that would be this and this as the base. Um, this will make more sense as we start to do examples, so let's just jump right into ex some examples. The main thing to pull from this page, though, is that area equals base times height is our formula. The base can be any side, and the height is the straight distance, and you'll know it's straight because of the 90 degree angle it forms that runs between the bases. So our first example is this blue parallelogram, and uh, we'll, we'll work this one through together. Area equals base times height. In this one, it's pretty straightforward. I've only given you two numbers to work with. So let's just quickly identify this is the base, and the reason I know that is because going from one side straight down to the other side is this straight distance that has to be the height. So if this is the height, height connects base to base, meaning this has to be the base. Let's say I had also labeled this other side, this slanted side, as, I don't know, 15 meters. This is meaningless, useless information. It would not be used to help me find the area because area is base times height. This third extra bit of information is not the base, it's not the height, it's just there to throw you off. So you need to just figure out what the base is, in this case, 12, the height is, and then from there, just find the product of those two. So 12 times 14 is 168, so the area of this parallelogram is 168. And now let's get our label. The label is meters, and for area, it's always the units squared, so meters squared. And that would be my area. Practice example number one. Cool. I'm going to show you the next one and then give you an opportunity to come up with an answer on your own. Type it in and see how you do. So this orange parallelogram. So hopefully you identified that the base is 4, the height is 8.5, and, and that means it's a pretty simple multiplication problem. 8.5 times 4 is what your setup should be. And then final answer, I hope you got 34 feet squared because the base, again, is 4, and the height is 8.5. And, and that's it. Um, for good measure, let's try one more of these. So here's a parallelogram. Identify the base, identify the height, and then let's come up with a final, final area. So I came up with a base is 2.5, and, and I'm coming up with the height is 2. And the way I know that is the height is a straight distance that connects base to base, and it forms a 90-degree angle, showing it that it's a straight distance. Um, and then I'm plugging that into my simple formula of base times height, 2 times 2.5, which is 5 feet squared as my area. Final answer. So parallelograms are fairly simple figures. We'll be doing a little bit more with them as we do some practice together in class. Um, I will leave you with one final problem, and you probably are thinking that there's no way to make these into word problems, but I got your back. Our example three is the area of a parallelogram shaped forest. If you're having trouble seeing that, I'll outline it for you. Um, so the forest is right in here, and if you just look at the red lines that I drew, that forms a parallelogram. Um, so we are told that the area of this forest, this forest takes up 99,000 square yards. So we know the area, I'm going to write down what we know, 
99,000 yards squared. And um, from this picture, I know that one side of the forest spans 660 yards, and cutting through the forest is this deer trail um, that people can walk on. And I guess that deer can walk on. My question is, what is the length of that trail? If I was trying to determine how far my hike would be, or how far the deer travel from one side of the forest to the other, um, what is that distance? So I'll give you a moment to think it through, give it a try as best as you can, and then we'll go through it together. All right, so I treated this as, I know the formula is area equals base times height, and I'm just gonna plug in what I do know. I know the area is 99,000. I know that the base of this parallelogram is 660. What I don't know is the height, the distance that spans from one base to the other and is straight forms a 90 degree angle. So that's my unknown. Now I can treat this as a simple one step equation. We've done plenty of uh, algebra prior to this chapter. So to solve this, I would just divide by 660 and that would give me my final answer of the height of this parallelogram, also known as the distance of the deer trail, is 150 yards from one side of the road or one side of the parallelogram to the other. 150 yards, that's how far the deer travel on their deer trail. And that's a quick overview of parallelograms. We'll do more of this and we'll practice a great deal in class. If you've got any questions or things that came to mind as you were going through this lesson, let me know now. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day, math people. See ya.